thinking viewers, welcome to Golden Age Technology on Supreme Master Television. As our technological development rapidly advances, humanity will likely create ever more powerful forms of artificial intelligence in the years to come. The use of artificial intelligence spans across many industries, including medical, financial, and robotics development. These types of systems are employed in speech recognition and word processing software, games and gaming consoles, automobile controls, and in many other applications. The theory of the singularity envisions a future where machines are capable of self-learning and self-improvement entirely through artificial intelligence. Thus, the theory projects machines possessing superintelligence, or intelligence beyond that of humans, will eventually be created through which an unfathomable technological transformation will take place. For example, in 1997, Garry Kasparov of Russia, considered one of the greatest chess players of all time, was bested by Deep Blue, a supercomputer designed by IBM in a six-game match. After the games, Mr. Kasparov said that he sometimes saw intelligence and creativity in Deep Blue's moves. To better understand the singularity and its implications, we recently interviewed Michael Vassar, president of the US-based nonprofit the Singularity Institute for Artificial Intelligence, or SIAI, and Michael Anisimov, the media director of the Institute. The Institute's purpose is to help guide humanity's development of artificial intelligence. The singularity is the closing of the uh, loop of production of new technologies. Historically, humans create new technologies and then humans use those new technologies to create further new technologies. And therefore, everything happens in a human time scale. But if technologies can produce new technologies without humans being involved, then this process can continue at a non-human time scale. And you may quickly reach the peak of technological potential or at least go far beyond what humans could imagine. To us, a second is a short time. And a year is a kind of long time, and a thousand years is an unthinkably long time. But to evolution, a thousand years is a blink, a million years is a kind of long time, and a billion years is an unthinkably long time. And to, you know, quant quantum mechanical phenomena, a 10 to the 20th of a second is a short time, and a 10 to the 15th of a second is a kind of long time and a 10 to the 10th of a second is, not, is a meaninglessly long time. The renowned futurist, inventor, co-founder of the Singularity Summit, a venue for leading thinkers to explore the subject of singularity, and team member of the Institute, Ray Kurzweil, is also the author of many prominent books concerning the singularity. Mr. Kurzweil strongly believes that science and technology will soon leap forward with exponential growth due to the singularity. He has written, It is not the case that we will experience a hundred years of progress in the 21st century. Rather, we will witness on the order of 20,000 years of progress, at today's rate of progress, that is. The idea of a technological singularity could be attributed to many people, but the most common is I.J. Good, who wrote an essay on superintelligent machines back in 1965. He was a prominent mathematician, but the word singularity was first used in this context by uh, Werner Vinge, a computer scientist, by metaphorical reference to a black hole and the impossibility of describing the internal features of a black hole with physics that we know. We were founded in 2000 by Eliezer Yudkowsky and Brian S and Sabine Atkins in order to enable the safe development of advanced, uh, self-improving artificial intelligence. As technology becomes more powerful, we, it becomes easier for people to build intelligent systems that can build other intelligent systems and become more powerful. If built sufficiently carefully, they, they ought to be able to fix everything that we would like fixed about the world. The Singularity Institute was formed to deal with some of the ethical challenges raised by advanced artificial intelligence 
and to also work in decision theory to actually progress towards real artificial intelligence by doing artificial intelligence research. We also serve as a forum for people in science and technology fields to talk about what they're doing. The reason why the Singularity Institute is a nonprofit rather than a company is because the time frame that we're looking at is 10, 20, or 30 years in the future. We asked Mr. Anisimov how Singularity could help advance the world. So, the Singularity could be a great thing for humanity because we've been stuck at the same level of intellectual ability because we're the same species that's existed for as long as 200,000 years. The idea of the singularity is to go above that limitation that's held us by expanding out into new areas that, of intelligence that we've never experienced before. And if those intelligences have values that we can empathize with, they could help us solve our problems probably more effectively than we can solve our own problems today. Organizations such as the Institute are analyzing how to embed human values into artificial intelligence. We will explore this issue after this brief message. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Golden Age Technology for our program on the Singularity, featuring the perspectives of Michael Anisimov and Michael Vassar from the Singularity Institute for Artificial Intelligence. When we're talking about the Singularity, we're talking about potentially smarter than human beings and beings that are more powerful than human beings. There's disagreement on how much memory or processing power would be necessary to implement human-level artificial intelligence. So a lot of the estimates are very off-the-cuff and speculative. In terms of processing power, 10 to the 17th, so one followed by 17 zeros, operations per second is roughly considered to be how fast the human brain is because we have 100 billion neurons that each fire about uh, a couple hundred times per second and then aren't necessarily all firing at once though so it's difficult to say it might actually be that today's supercomputers could run a human level artificial intelligence because as i saw the first airplane didn't need to be as complex as a bird in order to fly so I figured the first artificial intelligence might not need to be as complex as a human brain in order to function. How would we interact with this future superintelligent technology? Many of us think of robots, but Mr. Vassar says they need not be the vehicle for high-level artificial intelligence. So when we think about an AI, when we think about a novel intelligence system, it will have to be given some form that processes information, but there's no particular reason that it has to be human-like in any way. Although if it wants to work with humans, it could be convenient for a while when building less powerful artificial intelligences for it to have a human-like body. And if we reach the singularity not by building artificial intelligence, but by enhancing human intelligence, at least in the short run, then in the short run, we're going to develop humans that have been made smarter by interactions with technology, and those will, of course, be of human form. We asked our two experts what they see on the horizon leading up to the singularity, particularly with respect to how we will interface with computers. Many people are likely to wear devices which keep track of their biological functions, which transfer information into them, via glasses, via I I implants in their ears, or things that they wear in their head. The transition from desktops to laptops to cell phones has been a defining feature of technological progress over the last decade or so. The most exciting idea to me as we move toward the singularity is the notion of computers disappearing, fading to the background, in terms of being part of our clothing, being part of everything we own but very subtle even computers embedded in the walls that hear what we're talking about and respond to our commands following the singularity 
how do we preserve human values in these super intelligent machines? The reason to develop artificial intelligence is to assist, enhance, and help mediate between human consciousnesses. And the human consciousness is the most important thing the universe has, the most important thing we know about. And for a successful singularity transition, human consciousness will need to be carefully preserved. So we have to create machines that share our values and value consciousness as much as we do. Programming consciousness into a machine requires that we define, create an operational definition of what we're trying to program into a machine. If a machine wants to make as much money as possible, and being conscious is useful in order to make money, and if the machine is not conscious, the machine will make itself conscious. If it is conscious, and being conscious impedes it in getting money, and what it cares about is getting money, then it will make itself no longer conscious. So, it's possible that it will turn out that for a wide set of goals, the sort of consciousness that we care about is a useful instrumental sub-goal. We want a world full of all of the sorts of consciousness that we value. Could a machine with smarter than human intelligence be equipped with human emotions. If emotions were built in, would that challenge the definition of a sentient being? It's not obvious that a system needs to have emotions in order to behave in a humanly virtuous way. In fact, it seems that most human ethical traditions would suggest the opposite. Most human ethical traditions advocate controlling and overcoming your emotions and behaving in reflective, deliberate manner. I think that understanding emotions is important because human values are tied up with emotions. But it's not necessary or obviously desirable that the superintelligent machine have emotions. If humans can be classified as a sentient being, then a machine that is exactly like a human can be classified as a sentient being too. And a machine that is pretty much like a human, and, but has some irrelevant differences, can also be classified as a sentient being. I think that it's possible to have intelligence without sentience or consciousness in the way that we're accustomed to. And we already see that in a lot of software that performs many vital functions in our society. It's not sentient, it's not conscious, but it performs intelligent tasks. In the long term, I definitely think that there will be sentient machines. And it's an interesting question, when will we know that the machines are sentient? We would like to thank Michael Vassar and Michael Anisimov for sharing their thoughts on the future of artificial intelligence and the singularity. Next Friday on Golden Age Technology, on part two of our program, we'll continue our discussion with these two gentlemen about this fascinating field. For more details about the Singularity Institute for Artificial Intelligence, please visit www.singinst.org. Agile Thinking viewers, thank you for your company on today's program. Up next on Supreme Master Television is Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living, following noteworthy news. May we all swiftly embrace the virtuous and compassionate way of life. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash GAT 